Welcome back. As promised, the second JVC car radio CD player that uh, apparently the seek function for the radio tuning doesn't work. So this should be an interesting one. Let's turn it on and verify the fault. One quick note, when dealing with car audio, 99.99% of units have the black wires ground, of course, negative. Your red and yellow are your memory and your ignition switched. You can tie those together uh, for, for your positive feed. Um, when bench testing, you don't need to have one always on 12 and then switch the other one to make these units work. They're quite happy with that. Okay, we'll turn it on. Okay, not exactly what I expected to see. Okay, so it was the seek buttons in the radio that weren't working. Uh, and as you can see, if I hold it down push left and right, it didn't really do anything. It's flashing M for manual tuning, um, which it won't come out of manual tuning mode now. So that's quite odd. You can still access the menu. Um, those are stored stations. But um, it won't seek. I wonder if there's any radio noise coming out of this. Let's put some speakers on it. Right, I have a speaker attached. I'm not getting any sound out. Let's try a CD. All right. That's not a good start. No audio out. No response to the volume seek buttons. Yet it is playing. Um, might just check another channel in case it's maybe it's blowing the channel. Who knows? Okay, I'm on another channel. Still no sound. I can very faintly hear a little bit of hissing in the speaker, but nothing coming out. Oh, did you hear that? We have button sounds. Ah. Interesting. So, can I try a different source? So, okay, the amplifier chip is working. But there's no sound out from the tuner or the CD. I will have to rip this open, I think. <laughs> See what's going on in there. Right, so we'll unclip the front. The clip on the side, as well as one on the top. And uh, I usually go for the ones that are that are same, that, that corner versus that one there. And likewise, this top left corner versus this top catch, because uh, then you can pry that side of the plastic housing away easier when they're both unlatched at least normally <laughs> sometimes that hangs on a bit <laughs> almost I'll get the bottom ones and one there and one there there we are. Sometimes it takes a bit of force, but gentle force, because uh, should we get this thing working properly, those clips will want to be able to retain that front unit, as that's what locks the faceplate on. Now, I can assure you that uh, this here, 
is straight. I just noticed that it's quite crooked. Bit of a odd lens artifact. It appears to be curved, but that's not as dead straight. So a couple of screws. Where do I put my screwing stick? Yes, it's been a couple of hours in between shooting the last one and shooting this one. Things have moved. And then that will pry up from those retaining clips on the side. It will need a little bit of encouragement it looks like. Let's give it a bit of a wedge under the side until that lifts. Okay, so there was a screw in the side there, uh, one in the back there, and another one in the side there, which allows the top half to come off. And then there's just a, a flex up to the CD, flat flex there. So we'll pull that out, remove this top half with the CD mech in it, and we're left with the bottom half. A um, couple of uh, metal tabs we need to bend in order to get the circuit board out of the bottom half. So these metal tabs, they are, are straight when they come up through the PCB and they're bent over. So all we need to do is grab pliers and uh, bend them back straight again so the board will slide over. There's one there, there's one there. And then the board should just slide up off them like that. So I'm having a look over this board and what immediately comes to my attention is the solder work that has happened around here. It, it stands out to be hand soldered. Um, there's, there's a lot of flux residue. Uh, the solder uh, amount of solder on the surface mount components is uneven. Uh, it's shinier than the rest of it, um, and some of the pins down here uh, also appear to be uh, re-soldered. Um, this is on the voltage regulator IC for the whole system. Um, it's odd because this is a brand new unit, and uh, as, as sold as new, it has never been sent away for repair. So I'm starting to think JVC must be flogging off refurbished units as new. Um, I really don't think the previous owner of this would have bothered to try and rectify the situation themselves, uh, given the warranty um, processes make it so, so easy to just bring it back within 12 months um, and it gets replaced. It's, it's not worth the hassle. So that is immediately interesting. In saying that though, nothing looks damaged. I guess there's a chance that these parts were left off during production and have been added on by hand after the board was 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 flow soldered. Possibly the first port of call is to look at this voltage regulator, see that we're getting expected voltages. And I don't have a service manual, so I would recommend looking at the data sheet for the regulator IC it will give you pretty much the outputs that would be used in a device like this on each pin so you can check that make sure there's 3.3 uh, I'm, I'm thinking it'll be the same regulator chip as used in a previous model that we've looked at and uh, you'd be looking at 3.3 and 5 and um, I think there was 2 in there somewhere or, or something so 
we can check those to make sure that there's enough voltage getting to the right parts of the board and just go from there. Okay, so the first pin I'll check is uh, pin 12, and according to the data sheet, it should be 3.3. So we've got one down at this end. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And we've got 3.3. Good start. Pin 13 should also be 3.3. So we were, we, that one was 12. 13. 3.3. Good start. Okay. Okay, pin 5 should be 5 to 9 volts, depending on how they've programmed it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we've got 8. So I think uh, that's... It's, at the moment, I'm going to say that's acceptable. It's within 5 to 9 volt range. <clears throat> it is marked as audio. I'm not entirely sure what they use that for, but it's a separate power feed for um, audio section. It could be... It could be the audio control. There is an IC in here that we'll look at shortly that is a is the three bar three band um, control IC, and it's used for the doing the equalizer and um, looks like the signals go into that and then come out of that. Okay, pin one is illumination. I'm not going to worry about that because the lights on the faceplate are lit up, so I'll say that's okay. Pin three is CD. And it could be five or eight volts. So if we go pin three... It's currently sitting at nothing, but I haven't selected CD yet. And I don't think that's going to be a problem at this stage because... There's no sound coming out of the radio section either, so I'm picking that, that voltage only switches on when it needs to activate the CD mechanism. The other two voltage rails aren't important either, it's just a power antenna output and a external power, I think it has a separate power output for if you want to uh, switch on a amplifier separately to the antenna lead although I'm not entirely sure it's implemented in this particular unit so now we need to look a bit deeper I think I think I'm happy with the voltage rails there the eight eight and a half volt ones a little concerning possibly I don't know why they chose eight and a half instead of just saying make it nine uh, but it could be quite valid still so let's carry on right the next part that I want to look at, I mentioned before, is this IC right here. Now this is a TDA7718, and looking at the data sheet, it suggests that, well, this is a three-band uh, equalizer. It looks like it also controls the muting and the volume control, and it can be configured, I think it can be configured for um, various steps of volume just just looking at a quick uh, look at the sheet it's got um, step resolution uh, mentioned there uh, actually I think that might be preset step resolution but anyway that's that's the volume control and muting and equalizer now the first 13 pins are different inputs of uh, any from from what they call single ended inputs up to quasi um, quasi-differential pair and then the other uh, pins are the outputs and power and control so what we need to do is see if there's anything on the inputs and then see if there's anything on the outputs and get a feel for whether this IC is functioning as it should be okay so the first pin I'm going to measure is the mute pin and pin 23 and that looks like it has 1.8 sorry 0.8 of a volt on it it's half per division um, 
point eight of a volt. We need to work out if that's enough to cause this thing to go into mute or not. Now I'm just going to run down the 13 inputs because I'm not too sure which input it is for the radio and we'll see if we can get a signal. Yeah, yeah, okay, so pin one off the bat has a it's AC couple that. <sighs> And two, and three. Hmm. Okay, I just ran down those inputs and there doesn't seem to be anything. Pin 26 should be our serial data, so I guess we should see if there's any activity happening on there as well. We have a look at 28, 27, and 26. Oh yeah, I might just DC couple that and see what we get. It's off the charts, but there is something going on there. Make it a volt. Make it a bit brighter. Hmm. There we go. We can definitely see activity on the serial data line, which is good. And, oops, I popped the screen off the front, so the whole unit's going to turn off when I do that. Let's just up. The time. Uh, now if I rotate the volume knob, I can definitely see activity with respect to rotating the volume knob. So I do know that it's sending the commands to the chip to control the volume. Um, now, let's just have a look at that mute line again. It's at 0.8 of a volt. Doesn't change when I rotate volume. Okay. Um, I, hmm, still not sure what the level for that should be. Now, if I have a look at Pin 1, pin 1 is sitting at 3 volts DC. Let's just, have a look. just going to check the voltage on this IC. And we have just over 8 volts. I'm picking that would be off that earlier 8 volt line that we referenced at 8.5. By the time it makes it over to that IC, it may go through a diode. Here we are half volt drop along the way somewhere. <clears throat> now what I have is I've got three volts on the inputs and I'm getting three volts on each of the outputs like that. Well just over three and that one was four give or take. No variation of input signal um, so I think we may need to trace it back further towards the source. I'm not yet ready to rule out this IC as bad, given that the the input would be, if it had a, if it had a signal on it, would be swinging up and down. Um, the output would follow it, and since it's sitting high at 3 volts, then the output's going to sit high at about 3 volts. So, not sure this chip is the cause at the moment. I think it's further back toward the source. Uh, so we need to find out where the signals come from and see what's, if we can figure out what's going on there. A little bit slow going without a schematic, of course. 
Okay, I've just started with the first two input pins, pin one and two, just labelled as single ended input, um, and they come to these two capacitors uh, through the vias to the other side of the board, which then snake their way all the way over to here. And uh, from here, they feed up and over to this IC here, which uh, appears to be the tuner IC. I could not find much info on it, other than uh, it was it was um, what I could find was a little blurb about it and and what it does. And that was enough to lead me to believe uh, it was a uh, tuner IC. It had uh, mentions of bandpass filtering of a certain frequency uh, range and uh, sawtooth and so on. Um, so yeah, I think that's the tuner IC. I can't find any information... Well, I mean, I can't I can't identify any other chip on the board, and being right beside the uh, aerial plug connector, that's the most likely um, op option for that there, with its own little crystal by the look of it as well. So anyhow, the audio traces come out of there and head over to pin one input. So it's interesting that there is nothing on pin one. Uh, there must be something happening at this IC. I know the seek functions weren't working, but um, yeah, bit of a head scratcher at the moment. Okay, I've found the signal lines from the tuner IC that go to the uh, what looks like the source selection IC, and uh, if I probe that. Now what we can see there, and it may not show up on camera, but we have a 3.2 volt uh, DC offset and a bunch of a horrible ripple of some sort of frequency overlaid on top of that. And that can be followed all the way back to this capacitor that, that's uh, in series with it. And uh, on the other side of that capacitor that goes to the chip, the uh, ripple's gone. But we still have a 3 volt uh, DC offset, which is none of that's what I would have expected on a uh, audio signal line. Um, and uh, yeah, it's quite odd. Uh, I have read the data sheet and found that the mute line that I was looking at is uh, a valid low signal to disable mute. Uh, it's below below a volt. I think it was, so yeah, um, well within that. So the chip itself isn't muted. So out of curiosity, I thought maybe that IC had been damaged. And uh, just by luck, the other unit, or maybe not by luck, <laughs> the other unit has the identical IC, which is that one there. And uh, I pulled it out, swapped it over, still the same effect. Um, and it's on you know, the outputs, I scope the outputs and they're also outputting a high uh, 3 volt uh, DC signal um, I guess you would expect that uh, the output follows the input and uh, I think the IC just selects which, in, which input to pass through to the amplifier chip so either it's not the IC or both ICs are, uh, uh, are no good. Now, I haven't quite finished uh, yet because I, I don't have a schematic. Um, I, I don't know uh, if the input leads are connected anywhere else. I'm, um, I, I, it's, yeah, that, that DC offset has is, is got me scratching my head. Um, I think what I might do is lift the input pin off the board and uh, see if the DC level on that remains. And if it does, I'll be inclined to think the chip is damaged and it's just passing um, rail voltage straight out 
um, out both ends, out the out the input end, out the output. Um, that's possible. But I'll, I'll lift that pin off for a start and, and we'll see if it uh, goes away, if it's still present on the pad for that pin, um, but not the pin itself. Um, it might be that something further before the IC is injecting injecting that signal and uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was all of the inputs, I'll just double check that, but I'm pretty sure each one of those inputs had 3 volt on it which is interesting because they each go off to a different source, be it the front auxiliary connector or a CD audio or the tuner for example. Um, it would be interesting to know why that they all have uh, that uh, offset. Okay, I lifted uh, pin 1 and uh, found that the DC offset is still there. It's uh, coming out of this IC, um, out of the input. That can't be a good thing, surely. Um, I do note that the unit is drawing 400 milliamps uh, while it's running, um, and that IC does get a little bit warm. Um, I'm pretty sure that head units don't draw 400 milliamps at idle. Um, I, I haven't got a good one on me to check, but just from memory from uh, um, past dealings with them. I, I don't think that's quite right, but um, I, I could be wrong, but still um, the fact that it's pumping a steady voltage out of all of the inputs, um, there's every chance that whatever's gone wrong in that chip um, has been a result of... Uh, well, I'm, I'm going to say there's every chance that the person who owned this has wired it up backwards. It spiked the chip and upset it, uh, which is it's possible because I believe that's exactly what happened to the last unit we looked at. Um, and this is the IC out of that unit. It's doing the same thing. Um, yeah, odd. Maybe uh, someone else has a theory on this and um, you might like to comment, but uh, I'm going to wrap it up. At that point there, I don't, as I say, I really don't understand why there's a, a DC offset on an input, an audio input, that all is doing is being switched through to an output. Um, and in saying that too, also I don't have the ability to tune the radio, so whether that DC output has gone uh, back up the line and into the tuner IC and damaged that as well, could be a never-ending can of worms. <laughs> yeah. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, maybe we'll get luckier next time. But uh, I do know the amp chip in this one is good, so it's going to make good spare parts anyway. Thanks for watching.